welcome to Hip Q's History. We're going to kick it Shank versus the United States, 1918. One of the more famous Supreme Court decisions that you need to know if you're in an American history course and you don't know Shank, you best not be showing up for the exam because it's not going to go well. But let's kick it Shank versus the United States. You know what I'm going to say. Giddy up for the learning. Let's do it. So the reason that I yelled kind of fire when I put that the fire up was because that's kind of the basis of the analogy that Oliver Wendell Holmes is going to use in this court case. The big idea before we get to kind of what happened is that civil liberties, the Bill of Rights are not absolute, at least in terms of the interpretation of the Supreme Court. And you can certainly reject that argument and lay it down in the comments below. But we're talking about kind of this decision of Schenck versus United States. So First Amendment has really clear language, Congress shall make no law of that of abridging the freedom of speech. And in 1917, Woodrow Wilson is going to pen the Espionage Act of 1917. You want the vocab? This is a huge law. This law later will be used to convict the Rosenbergs in the 1950s, put them to death. It's used to arrest the Pentagon paper uh, whistleblower, um, who was uh, Daniel Ellsberg. You got what? Um, Chelsea Manning. You got Edward Snowden. You got this big long list of characters that have gone down with what I call Baby Patriot Act the Espionage Act of uh, 1917. The fear in Wilson eyes is that we're going to war. We're going to World War I against the Germans. There's all these German immigrants inside the United States that are posing a threat. So we need some type of law on the books that's going to uh, react to that threat. So basically what the law says is that uh, if you're going to convey information with the intent to interfere with the operation of the armed forces of the United States, or you're going to give some type of support to the success of our enemies, you're going down, punishable by death, or up to 30 years in jail, or both. Don't ask me about the both, it makes no sense. So Charles Schenck is a socialist, right? He's to the left of the paradigm, he's against war. He thinks it's like, you know, the puppet war of the capitalist masters. So he's in charge in Philadelphia of printing leaflets to tell people, don't do the draft, right? Resist the draft, that the draft is unconstitutional. I think his argument was that it was involuntary servitude and that was banned under the 13th Amendment. So in his mind, he has a rationale for exercising exercising his freedom of speech. In his mind, he's not trying to help Germany win, he's just exercising his natural rights that are in the Constitution, in the Bill of Rights. And he goes down! He goes down! He's arrested and he goes to the slammer. That's why it's Schenck versus United States, the dude's in jail. Arguing, Congress, you shouldn't be abridging the freedom of speech. The Espionage Act of 1917 clearly does that. Set me free, why don't you, babe? Because we're not gonna. We're not gonna because it's Oliver Wendell Holmes that writes the decision. And the big concept is that civil liberties are not absolute, especially during wartime. And what Holmes argues is that um, Schenck's actions are not unlike yelling fire in a movie theater that are gonna put those people in the movie theater in dire harm's way, um, i.e. the movie theater being the United States. And Schenck's action of yelling fire is saying, don't do the draft, which is getting in the way of winning the war. What Schenck is arguing is not only does he have the constitutional right to do this, but in his mind, he does see a fire. He doesn't even argue with the analogy. There is a fire. The fire is our freedoms are burning up in the war, and I'm just kind of calling attention to it. But that don't matter. So that's Schenck's argument. He's going to lose that case. And at the end of the day, we're left with Oliver Wendell Holmes' clear and present danger doctrine. You want vocab? There it is. Clear and present danger. If your freedom of speech crosses the line into clear and present danger, that's where it stops being freedom of speech according to the Supreme Court and this precedent. And remember the big idea that the Bill of Rights is not absolute, and if you could talk about the freedom and order arguments in there, then you're just a gangster for the learning. So thanks guys for checking in with the little hip cues. If you haven't subscribed, what the hell man? Just click my face and do a brother a favor. Save a pony, click my face, subscribe. Retention goes ahead. Energy flows, guys. We'll see you next time for a little bit more of the learning on the YouTube.